The Wadawurrung people walked these hills and shores for thousands of years before European settlement and I pay my respects to their leaders past, present and emerging. Today we celebrate the day this school began, the 8th of July in 1861 when Dr George Morrison welcomed his two teachers, 40 students, their families and the school's founding committee to this school they named the Geelong College, which is now one of Victoria's oldest schools. It was the realisation of the vision of some of the church and community leaders in the fledgling town of Geelong, then only 25 years old. A town fast becoming a prosperous agricultural and commercial hub. And like other settlements springing up around Australia in the 1800s, they wanted to provide their children with a fine education so the prosperity of the town and the nation would continue. Dr Morrison then built these buildings 10 years later and the school moved to the Newtown Hill in 1871. Today they would marvel at what has become of their town, their country, and their school. On this important day, I want to share with you some of my thoughts about the role this school plays in our nation. Since the COVID-19 pandemic spread across the globe, I've become more grateful than ever to live in Australia. And despite our recent wave of infections in Victoria, we've managed to achieve a degree of control of COVID-19 that has escaped many other countries. How have we achieved this? Why has our death rate been just over 100, whilst other countries have lost hundreds of thousands? And when I look behind the good decision making, it speaks well of our society. Ours is a society that values good education, an education that produces excellence in scientists, doctors, economists and leaders. A society that respects this excellence, rewards talent and expertise, and promotes people to lead our institutions on merit and ability, so clearly demonstrated in our health leaders over the recent months. A society that has inherited a political system that for all its flaws and annoyance can set aside partisanship and angst to work together in a crisis. A society that elects politicians who listen to their appointed experts and have the courage to accept their advice however painful. A society that can produce true leaders beyond those politicians who shine in a crisis, demonstrating integrity, delivering a coherent message, one that we can believe and trust. And of course, a society that demonstrates compassion, obeying instructions and accepting sacrifice for a greater good. In this case, it's the health of us all. So this is what we call our civil society. Australia has been called the lucky country, but getting to this position was not simply by luck. The first contribution to our good story relates to our early European settlers wanting to build a fairer society than their countries of origin. A society where, where everyone has a fair go. Charles Dickens, the most widely read English novelist of the 19th century with classics like Oliver Twist and David Copperfield, he had numerous characters in his books who sent their wayward offspring to Australia. One of them described this country of the 1860s as the pit at the end of the world you toss your useless folk in. Ironically, Dickens himself sent two of his nine children to Australia to make their own way. But many of those finding their way to this country in the 1800s proved to be better than Dickens' useless folk. And finding themselves in a new world, 
They were not bound by the shackles of class and hierarchy, wealth and position of their country of origin. Importantly, our forefathers brought to this country both an honour of education and a desire for a political system that embraced fairness. They diverged from the various models of 19th century societies developing simultaneously across the American and African continents to develop our unique Australian society. The founders of our constitution in 1901 also valued everyone's right to an opinion, giving all citizens the vote regardless of wealth or gender, which was a revolutionary concept at the time. Since the very beginning, our society has been progressively enriched through immigration almost every, from almost every other country in the world. And each wave of migration welcomed the opportunity to live in a society that both shares and cares. This compassion has been witnessed in recent weeks with the outpouring of generosity and support for the residents in those public tower housing blocks in Melbourne. And this compassion is perhaps a contrast to what we are witnessing in some of other nations around the world during the pandemic. The second aspect to create our civil society can be attributed to our nation's economic adaptability in the face of many challenges. Over time, our economic development has had to be agile. In the beginning, over our first 150 years, we were a dispersed rural and agricultural economy. The horseback riding bush pioneers illustrated in the poems of Banjo Patterson and Henry Lawson shone. And they then bred those brave knockabout heroes from World War I who we celebrate on Anzac Day. But then, following World War II, we progressed over the second half of last century to become a manufacturing society. And now, in this century, you are witnessing the next major turn in direction of our economy to the current contribution, with, sorry, the current combination of a knowledge economy supported by our rich mineral resources. Our COVID-19 experience serves as a fine example for the rest of the world what an agile and collaborative society with respect for good governance and good science can achieve. Australia is a small player on the international stage, but this demonstrates we punch above our weight. And there are parallels for our city of Geelong here. If Australia is a small but respected player on the international stage, Geelong is a small but respected player on our national stage. We are what's called a second city. We're much, much smaller than our big brother capital cities. But we too punch above our weight. Geelong reflects Australia at large. Geelong has had to be agile to maintain a sustainable economy. Like Australia, our 1820 origins were based on our rural agricultural hinterland as a centre for wool and wheat. But then in the 1950s, we became a manufacturing hub with Ford, Alcoa, International Harvester, Winchester and other industries. But their demise with globalisation saw our city defy the doomsayers to again reinvent ourselves by becoming Australia's foremost social insurance sector with NDIS, TAC, WorkSafe, a knowledge centre with Deakin University which boasts over 60,000 students here and beyond, and a health sector servicing all of Western Victoria. And now there's even talk that bespoke manufacturing may again return. And of course, we have that football club, as old as this school, that serves to unify our aspirations. 
So today, as we reflect on the nearly 160 year history of this school, an institution that has lived through all these changes of society and economy, our own history mirrors the tales of our nation and our city. This school has played a strategic role in all of these changes. It has reflected the changing mix of our society from the 1861 Scottish Presbyterian origins providing education for the families of merchants and farmers, then over time becoming more ecumenical in its Christian philosophy and now welcoming all religious and cultural backgrounds. 100 years ago, it was the school of choice for Western District farmers. 50 years ago, for the executives from the manufacturers of Ford and Alcoa, and now for the leaders within the insurers, university or health sectors. And as our collegians have graduated, their careers have reflected those changing opportunities, demands and needs of society, covering the full range of trades and professions. They've laid down their lives in service of their country as we commemorate each Anzac Day. They've run farms, businesses and factories. They've saved lives and solved problems. And they've even invented vaccines. They've been both leaders and doers, providing the very backbone of our society. And while the school reflects the city in which we exist, we also lead as, as our alumni are scattered through all its institutions, businesses and community organisations, providing exceptional leadership for our city in all its varied domains. Today we celebrate our founders, but we can reflect with great pride that the Geelong College is truly a part of the foundation stone of our city, our state and our nation. And we also recognise our privilege. So we must carry that pride with humility. I've focused on the glory and success of our society and our school, but there is also shame, which we must endeavour to address. I've talked about the prosperity we've gained from this part of the world, but we always have to be reminded that the European settlers stole the land from our first peoples. Those first peoples who trod this continent in harmony for 50,000 years before us. We've treated them appallingly for generation after generation. And we must strive to redress these wrongs and share our prosperity to address this inequality. But as a school, we also have our own demons to address the historic harm perpetrated on some past students by a few, but overlooked by many, continues to require our efforts at redress in its many forms. Whether we need guidance to address our failings or ways to continue our success, our compass is our core of values. And importantly, this school reflects the values of Australian society at large and those we hold so dear. Values that have shone during this COVID-19 pandemic. A respect for education that develops great scientists, doctors, economists and leaders with integrity and respect for each other as we support their endeavours. Compassion for the welfare of our community in all its diversity and the courage to survive the tough times. And holding true to these values with both humility and grace. These values have always been part of the Geelong College identity since very beginnings in 1861. So it's no coincidence that even to this day we see them as important characteristics for all collegians to contribute to maintaining our civil society. And this is why our school's values are integrity with compassion, community with diversity, aspiration with humility, respect with grace, 
endeavour with courage, for thus is the way to the stars.